Let's go and dive in the game. Let's go. I tried Necromancer. Also, you're gonna need to have to input filters. Now, let me tell you. Right now, the game has nine acts. You suppose the campaign is nine acts. It has a lot of side quests. It has some side quests. It has the quests, the basic quests, uh, that you're supposed to go through and learn the mechanics of the game and uh, the story, the story of the campaign. The campaign was okay. The the story was okay. Basically, this is the world of Itira. Uh, it's, the game is called Last Epoch because you are moving through different epochs, different uh, times, and through making the campaign. Uh, because the game wants you wants you to understand how you're supposed to play the game, it's, mo it's moving you through the different the, the five different epochs, era, era. We have the ancient era, divine era, imperial era, ruined era, and end of time. The resistances. Uh... We have fire resistance, lightning resistance, gold resistance, physical resistance, poison resistance, re necrotic resistance. And void resistance. You're supposed the cap of each resistance is at 75%. You're supposed somehow to have all this in 75%. Guys, there are six different, actually seven, there are six different rarities of equipment. We have the common one, the white is the common, the common equipment, the common rarity. We have the magic one, which is blue. Rare one, yellow, which have three or four. Four affixes and it looks yellow. We have the unique one, which is orange, is le the legendary, as we know it uh, from uh, uh, from Diablo Four. We have the we have sets like Diablo Two that gave us bonus bonuses, extra bonuses. In this game, we have sets. It's green. Uh, we have exalted, which is a new material. Uh, I mean, a new from uh, Diab uh, from Diablo Four. Okay, it's something new. We have exalted with this purple, and what exalted exalted uh, does is it has six tier or seven tier affixes. Legendary, you have seven, and we have a legendary. Legendary is like the uber uniques, like the uniques in Diablo. So that's all the different rarities of uh, the equipment, the items that you can find in last epoch. This is the crafting system. This is the crafting system. This is the best crafting system I came across to any action RPG, any MMORPG, any uh, survival game I have ever played and I have ever seen. Uh, what are you supposed to do here? First of all, in the game you have runes. You have, you have runes. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different kinds of type of runes. You have glyphs. Five different type of glyphs. And you have shards. Materials. So, let's suppose that I want to craft this one. It says forging potential 31. In order to be able to craft something in the uh, last epoch, the item must have forging potential. The more forging potential it has, the most things we can do. Let's say I want to add. I have here a critical strike multiplier tier three. This is tier three. All attributes tier two. Uh, health on melee skill or melee, or melee hit, tier six. This is empty. You can have all up, up to tier twenty. So tier six plus tier two it's eight plus tier three it's eleven. I still can upgrade. I can, I, I, uh, an item can only have up, up to tier twenty, except if it's, an, it's if it's an exalted one. Let's say that I want to clear. Clear. Let's say I want to upgrade critical strike multiplier. In order to upgrade it, you must have shards. You have you must have the multiplier shard. You can fight all these shards by playing the game, by doing the campaign, by doing the dungeons. Uh, and you're gonna earn some you're gonna earn some uh, shards. Uh if I 
if I didn't find, if I didn't have this uh, particular shard, I was not gonna be able to upgrade this critical strike multiplier. Yeah. And we have the runes. Rune of Shattering. Shattering means that I don't want this item. I don't want this item at all. I don't need it. But I want all the shards and all the materials that it has. I can shatter it. And I want all the, some of the materials back. This rune of refinement reloads the values of all affixes. Runes of removal removes a random affix. If I don't want some of the affix here, I can put this rune and remove an affix. It removed this one here. If I put this... Uh, uh, removes all implicit on an item. I don't want this. Changes the item into unique. I can make an item unique if I want. Ascent. And now it's a unique item. You cannot craft nice. unique items. It's the best craft system I have ever seen. Uh, like let's add an affix here. For instance, prefix, vitality, any affix. I want um, health. I want more health. Add an affix. Here one. I want to upgrade this. Let's put the hope and hope that it will not uh, subtract any force pot potentials. Upgrade. You see? Critical success. I it upgrade me. And plus one uh, tier without uh, uh, using any forcing potential because of the Glyph of Hope. You can do, we have runes to destroy an item, reroll the value of the item, reroll uh, the affixes, uh, and uh, to make a, a an item unique to ascend it, etc. etc. That's how the, port, uh, the crafting system works. It's amazing. It's the best crafting system I have ever seen in, uh, in a game. I think uh, also uh, we have idols. This is similar like Diablo 2. In Diablo 2, you, you had some idols. You had, if you remember, you had some idols. But you, you didn't have much inventory space because you were supposed to use to have to carry with you all the time the idols plus all the materials you gonna you gonna you could you could you could, you could, you could find all the things that you will find during your acts. So every single time you were transfer the tra uh, travel back to town to sell your items and still carrying your idols here. You don't have to do that. You have a different space to use your idols. It's amazing. Also, now, I found some shards. Look how amazing the game is. You don't have to worry about your inventory. Because you're gonna, while you play, you're gonna be full of runes, full of shards. You can transfer with one click of your button everything here. Amazing. All the nine acts and uh, all the glyphs that I have, all the models that I have done so far, I didn't, I didn't worry about my inventory. It was never full. I didn't, I forgot about my inventory at all. I didn't have uh, the need to go to the to, to transfer to the town in order to uh, relieve my burden. It's so clever that you don't have to do anything, man. Echo. And guys, 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 look. At the star stuff. Look at this. Look at this. And I haven't bought anything yet. You can use, you can, you can buy 200 star stuffs with some category. I have my gear. I have my common, my magic, my rare, my unique. The sets. I haven't found any set. My exalted. I have legendary. I haven't found any legendary. I'll craft anyone, but I'm gonna find. I have idols. I can use my idols here. If I'm full from my one, I can buy another one. You can buy with in-game in money with gold. You don't have to buy anything uh, with uh, money in life. Okay. If I want to buy something else, purchase for 70,000. That's it. That's all you have to do. Grind and have money. Look at this man. He's. Look at this man. Look, look at this. He's the best star stab I have ever seen in an RPG game. It's mind-blowing, man. You have skills, which is my skills. You can have up to five. One, two, three, four, five. And, and for every skill that you're gonna make, for instance, this is all the skills from the Aqualite. For every skill that you're gonna make, you're gonna choose, it has a different passive tree. Every skill, every skill has its own passive skill. Mind blowing, right? 
my summon Bone Golem. I made it, it was a Bone Golem. With uh, this passive tree, I transformed it to a Pied Golem. Uh, summon Skeletal Mage, it's own passive tree. Summon Raid, it's own passive tree. Summon Volatile Zombie, it's own passive tree. And you have your passive tree. You have your character's passive tree. I started as an Acolyte. You have your passive tree. And at some point, you're gonna choose your uh, master. Your, uh, what's, what's your master gonna be? And in uh, Wild Plague Acolyte, you're gonna choose. You're gonna have the, ch the chance to choose Necromancer, Leak, and Warlock, which is not able yet, which is not uh, unlocked yet, but it's gonna be unlocked in uh, the full release of the game. So, I have pa different kinds, different passive trees from my skills, and different passive trees from my Acolyte and from my Master. I'm a Necromancer. Man, it's amazing. And with this, you can play many, 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 many different combinations of, uh, of uh, and do many builds, many different kinds of builds. Because you have skill passive tree, you can play, you can still have the same skills. You can, I can still have uh, some, uh, some more skeletons, but I can transform it and play in a different build. Maybe I want to have, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I want to have skeleton rocks. Maybe I want to have um, necrotic, necrotic damage. Maybe I want to have uh, deep, more. Uh, maybe I want to have uh, uh, range skeletons. Uh, maybe I want to have uh, I don't know the uh, dread phalanx. So you can still play necromancer and have different combinations, many different combinations from the same skills. From instance, I'm gonna, I can do a different build with the same skills and Max can play or Christus can play a Necromancer with the same skills in a different way and create his own build it's amazing man you cannot do that in Diablo you can do that in Poe you can do that in Poe but in Poe it's very difficult to understand the mechanics of the game Even the game is fucking amazing the game is fucking amazing this is Monolith this is one of the basic uh, end game uh, mechanic of uh, last step. You're supposed, it's like maps. You're supposed to move through different planets. Let's call it planets. Uh, in the, in different kinds of epochs with different kinds of monsters and uh, different kinds of uh, environment. And every, for instance, I have completed this one because you can see the mark. I have completed this one. I have completed this one. And you, every time you complete a, a, you complete a monolith, you are you are earning stability. I'm supposed to fulfill all this stability and move to a different monolith. There are some planets here. There are different kind of planets. If you see here in the monolith, I'm here in the fall of the outcasts. The that we have after that, after I finish all this, because after I finish all this, in this in the monolith of fate. It concludes all this trick here, full of different kinds of maps, different kinds of plants. When I'm gonna, probably that's how it works, when I'm gonna pull off the outcasts, all the stabilities, and do all these quest echoes here, it's gonna, I'm gonna be able, probably, that's how I think it, I haven't done it, I'm gonna be able to move through a different monolith. The Black Sun, for instance, or Endicott Storm, or uh, I don't know, something different. And you're gonna move, move forward and forward, and each map has, <coughs> each epoch has different kind of masters, monsters, and sometimes you're supposed to defeat a, a, a big boss or do some quests. Let's go and do this one, the Run Sucket Camp. Level 50. So here, I don't know where the fuck I am. I'm somewhere here. I'm lost. You have quest. The quest of this, the quest of this. Uh, Monolith planet is investigate the destroyed outcast camp. Act active modifiers like uh, dungeon masters, like the Nightmare Dungeon or Nightmare Vaults on like, Diablo 4. It has some affixes and some different modifiers. These modifiers is enemies deal 50% increased physical damage, 16% increased item rarity, and 88% increased experience gain. Right, start over again, the, the same monolith.
When you will see Echo Conquer, you mean that you are done that you are done uh, with uh, this uh, monolith. Open portal, get the fuck out of there. And it will keep you here. This is all the treasure that you're gonna take for this for doing this uh, mecho. So we have the monoliths. This is a, this is the map system. While while I'm exploring, one planet, one monolith, monolith this one. If I move to the another one, it's gonna have a different one, a different uh, tree of maps. And each map it will say you. For instance, I want to find keys. I don't have keys. I want, this one provides us arena keys. It says the rewards. It says the modifiers and it says the enemy modifiers. It says that enemies. This is one end game mechanics. You have three different types of dungeons. The Temporal Sanctum, uh, the Solfar Bastion, Bastion, and the Lightless Arbor. We have three different dungeons. Every dungeon in there has a different mechanics, has a different build, has a different uh, environment, different rewards. And in order to visit any dungeon, you're supposed to find these keys. So, for instance, I have this Solfar Bastion key. And this light, uh, lightless arbor key. Right click, go there, travel. You have this NPC uh, here. Living so far from if you complete this dungeon and kill the boss, surprised. if you complete I this dungeon and kill the boss, you're gonna take some materials and, and you're gonna come back here. And with use, by using this material, you're gonna be able to transform and craft a legendary item. By combining an exalted item with a unique item. And in order to enter the to enter the door, you are supposed to use the key. If you don't have the key, you cannot enter. Enter. Each dungeon of, of these three different types of dungeons has four different Difficulty style. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4. Ender Dungeon. So we have uh, waves coming all over you. There are two different types of, uh, of arena, and four, in, in any dungeon, there are two dif uh, four different uh, tier of difficulties. And the arena, there are two different types the Endless Arena and uh, the Basic Arena. Which uh, after 50 waves, you gonna you must you must supposed to defeat uh, uh, the arena boss champion. The, the arena. Travel. Uh, pinnacle bosses. They're not gonna have the pinnacle bosses in the full release of the game, but they are planning to add them. Pinnacle bosses is gonna be like a uh, durian, like Lilith, uh, end game stuff. And uh, the end game stuff. One of them is gonna be this guy here. And the other one is gonna be this woman here. This thing here. This uh, basic, uh, uh, basic uh, iconic characters uh, from the story of the game. And here is the arena. I cannot go to the arena because I don't have the key. But if you find the key, you're gonna do the arena. So we have monoliths. We have monoliths. We have three different types of dungeons, which every dungeon has four different. Uh, difficulties uh, tier tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 and the arena amazing amazing nice nice, nice. amazing, amazing, amazing game it's an amazing game I uh, hope you liked it we're gonna play a lot of the last epoch uh, when it's gonna be released uh, the graphics of the game is gonna look amazing. New uniques, factions, three more acts, two new classes. Uh, we're gonna be there and play a whole lot of last epoch. Uh, what's your opinion so far about the game? Uh, I enjoyed it very much. I liked it very much. It's it has a lot of more depth from Diablo 4. Uh, 
and it's not so complicated like Path of Exile. It's something in between. 